Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I hope everybody's doing well. And ready to do some art that you have been practicing. So today, um, we're going to do something um, very pleasing, like always. Uh, in the past recent videos, uh, it's been a little challenge, but it's really good lessons on perspective, either by line. Uh, you could watch the videos, the, the, um, the most recent videos, either by line perspective drawing of created things like buildings, human creations, right? Buildings, houses, cities, or nature perspective, which are some rules that we experience ourselves every day in our lives um, and how to represent that perspective. So those videos we have done recently. Uh, and the last one actually uh, had a combination of both. It was a house in, um, in the forest and it had all aspects to represent things far away and close by. Um, but this time we're gonna uh, do one aspect of 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 drawing outside, uh, and like the title says, we're gonna draw trees. Okay, so um, you'll need two papers. I have more than two papers here, but we'll use two. Um, so this is one, and there's the second one, because um, we're gonna do two drawings. I think the time will be enough to be able to finish two drawings. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so here are my papers, and like always, I recommend any surface, uh, especially obviously hard, that you will draw on um, to keep papers, at least one paper under your paper, so you don't draw straight on the hard surface um, that could have some, you know, some something in, in its surface that will affect your drawing. So uh, a cushion of a few papers in between the surface and your drawing uh, is a good idea. Uh, so if you're drawing on sheets of paper, great. Make sure you have at least two or three. And then when you grab a drawing pad, you're all set because the drawing pad itself, right, is, a, is full of papers. Okay, and then I have... Besides the papers, I do care. I do have an eraser, single eraser, and a pencil sharpener, like that. And I have another type of pencil sharpener. As long as you have access to these things, you're all set. If you need to sharpen your pencil, and then and then try to make sure to have more than one uh, pencil that's already sharpened. So I do have those two with good erasers. Okay. So that's all we need in our eyes, our brains, right? <laughs> um, and we're going to have fun. So as the title says, we're going to draw trees, okay? We're going to do two drawings, very simple, representing trees. <clears throat> Let's get started. There's different ways to do trees, just like there are different trees, trees out in the world. And um, depending on the type of drawing you're doing, right, you um, you <clears throat> tackle the drawing a certain way. Um, there's drawings that we look for a goal where it's more realistic. There's drawings that are more design, right, more graphic. It's a more graphic creation. There are drawings that are um, more simple because they're more cartoony. There's more drawings that are that of trees that may be farther away. And there may be a drawing that you want to make it very realistic. And it's all about the tree. So there you go and you put a lot of more detail on it. So you have to observe the characteristics of this tree more in detail. Um, today, we're going to do a couple. And one is very, 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 very simple. Just to show you how a drawing could be created, just um, a representation can be created in, a, in very few simple approaches. 
and then the, the second one uh, has a little more detail, but it's a little more artistic by by the angle we focus on on the trees. Okay, I'll talk more about that when we get to that one. <clears throat> so for this one, um, we're I just want to put um, I just want to tell you right away that we're gonna use our pencil, right? But we're gonna use our pencil on the side, meaning um, we won't hold it <clears throat> like we're regularly holding it when we sign or write, which is a little more straight up. Um, we're, we're taught, and it's, it's true, um, to write, right? We have the pencil kind of like my hand is right now in an angle, OK? But we're going to use the pencil and in completely, almost, not completely flat, laying down, but almost, to use the side of the pencil. Um, OK? This first drawing will all be completed like that. So get used to um, using the pencil like this on the side. So if this is the surface, this, my hand, um, it's not completely flat because then we won't be able to to do any marks but a little angle like this you see that I'm using just the side of it okay um, let's get started um, we need the ground where the trees are gonna come up right and and the background the sky so we need kind of like a horizon I always talk about this kind of like a horizon that divides the ground from the sky. But this time, rather than right in the middle of the paper, we're going to lower it a little more down, OK? So visually, look at your paper. And imagine, with your imagination, divide it in half. Um, from top and bottom. So half of my sheet of paper is, um, I know where that line kind of goes, top to bottom, right? And I want you to, I'm not going to mark it because I don't want it in my drawing. So you, you, need, you need to do this on your own and get used to, by now hopefully, that with your mind you can actually Visualize this, this line that's like dividing the paper right here in half. You could use a ruler, but I don't recommend using a ruler because you got to get used to um, finding this. It's not about perfection. It doesn't have to be perf perfectly in half. But um, as you draw any other things, you assess positions. And this is one of the basic ones. So we got to get used to doing this on our own without a ruler that marks exactly which half is up here, which half is down here. We don't need that perfection. We just need to see this invisible line right here. OK. So there's a line here dividing my paper in half. Now I'm going to think of the bottom half. I'm going to concentrate on the bottom half, this here, this section. And I'm going to divide that in half. So. So basically a fourth of the paper. So if this is half and this is half, half of this bottom half will be like about here. See? So if this is half here, then my other half is about here. And again, it does, it's not about perfection. So this one I'm going to mark. You see, this one I am definitely going to mark down. Remember, we're using the side of our pencil. So what that does, it creates a thick, a more thick mark line. It also will make a lighter mark, and we want that. That's the whole point of this drawing, OK? OK. 
we want that um, lighter mark. In, so I'm gonna do it, go over it again. And, and another thing, and I gotta remind myself, we have to sharpen our pencil as we go, uh, as we keep drawing, and I'll explain you why. What happens is that as you use the side of your pencil, think about it, as you use the side of your pencil right here, um, uh, the side becomes uh, shaved away, right? And And then the wood, the part that is the wood, right, become, it starts blocking you from the paper not to allow you to make a mark because you're running out of graphite on the side of the pencil. And as you, as you make these marks on the side of the pencil, also rotate your pencil so you could get all the sides. So as you always use the side, rotate your pencil to get more of the side of the pencil and then Take a break and sharpen it or switch to your other pencil that's already sharpened, okay? These are habits that you need to um, have <clears throat> in your practice. Um, but, yeah, in this case, you will sharpen your pencil to get more of um, the contact of the side of the pencil with the paper. When we regularly sharpen our pencil to write, it's because we want that thin line. Okay, it's about the tip. You, the, the, the general common way of sharpening the pencil is to get that tip that's, that's, that's very thin and dark. And if you don't sharpen your pencil and you keep writing, you will end up with this. Let me see if I find it. Yeah, exactly. You will, find, you will end up with something like this. You see how it's not, the tip is not um, sharpened. So if I write with this pencil, sorry. I'll wait until it focus. There you go. If I write with this pencil, um, my line will be very thick, not dark. I don't want that, right? When you're writing or signing. But let's, fo let's go back to our drawing. Uh, we have this line that divides the paper is one fourth of the paper, meaning look one, two, three, four. So this is one fourth. This is half right here, right, and the other half of the entire paper. Great. We're gonna move on very quickly with with this drawing because it's very simple. But this is the ground, okay? This is the ground the trees are gonna come up from. And the trees are gonna be in front when we do them. Let's say I'm gonna do a tree right here, right? The tree are gonna be in front, obviously, of the sky. And gonna be in front of anything that's um, way back here in the background, if there's anything. And there is something I'll tell you in a moment, okay? So why don't we do, why don't we actually do that? So we have the horizon, but in this horizon, we're gonna do a gray mass <laughs> that represents, uh, it could be mountains, but in this case, I know it's gonna more likely look like trees that are very, very far away, like a forest or something, <clears throat> okay? But this you need to do lightly okay please lightly because it's very very far away okay so follow me here we have the line the base and now look it's a simple using the side of your pencil and i'm going you see how i'm using different heights to create this mass well this mass represents trees that are very far away, as simple as that may look. And even though it doesn't look like that is right now, all the other aspects of the drawing will help us 
see that. Okay, that's what happens with drawing too. Okay, it's like a puzzle. I may draw something and tell you this represents this, and you're not a hundred percent sure or convinced. But the fact that there's other things, right? It's not just that one. All of them combine to to synchronize like a puzzle and make sense out of everything. So even though this may not look like a bunch of trees way back in the distance, when we finish our drawing with the other trees in the sky, it will make more sense. So keep doing. We're going to go all along above our line here. And I'm not going too high, but I'm creating different heights. But I'm going to stay in this. You know, I'm not going to go too high because this is a forest in the distance. And there's a limit to how high it can be, right? At that distance, I mean. <clears throat> so we're going to keep doing this. I'm going to maybe bring this closer so you can see. But it's crucial you use the side of your pencil. The side of your pencil makes a thicker mark, lighter mark that you can control in a more kind of um, blurry, yeah, subtle. Subtle mark. Let's see. There's a shininess in my paper around this area here. If you notice, you see how it's lighter where my pencil is pointing? It's not the drawing, it's the light of my table. So if I take my drawing and I lift it up a little and turn it to the side, the drawing actually may look a little better, you see. So I apologize for that. Um, no, I don't. Let's finish this line. Okay. If you're, if you feel there's too many single, like thin lines, and try to make them thicker. A variety but not too thin because um, remember this is very far away so another thing that happens when things are far away they kind of clump together you know in the distance so that's all our trees that are way back there don't worry there'll be trees that are more um, represented so this is actually a little darker than what I expect okay but I have to do it because I, I have to make sure you see it on the video. So if you can make this lighter, please do. Mine is darker because of the video. And if yours is too dark and you don't understand or why it keeps getting, you always default for darkness, it takes practice, okay? But I want you to get in the habit that you can control your mark. And that's all about how much pressure you put on the paper. Okay, not everything, every time has to be the same darkness. And you may think that's, what's the use of that or how it, it's very important. Something as simple as that. To create different uh, differences in um, tones. Okay. If I were to do something in here, in this, I'm not going to do it, but in this group, darker, I'm going to be able to see it. That'd be great because it will be a different tone. I'll make it darker. You see how important it is to distinguish by tone? Okay. So now I think we're going to do the sky because remember how I said the trees are going to be on top of this background trees and the sky because we're going to do them right taking all this space and then uh, a little bit of the ground 
this whiteness here that we see at the bottom is actually snow. So there's a difference from the sky to the snow. Um, but we need to make sure we represent it for the viewer. So the sky are going to be gray masses, light, light, okay, <laughs> masses of gray, uh, kind of that, that float around, has a more organic flow in them, and that's what makes it the sky, okay? So, for example, um, you see how I keep using the side of my pencil, and I think it's time to sharpen it <clears throat> to get more of that side. Let's see how uh, nicely sharpened it. So I get now when I now I get more of the, the side. And don't worry, uh, there's a randomness here in the sky. And when you do your marks, doesn't they don't have to be perfect. Um, and we can also um, adapt them by the eraser by using the eraser. So the fact that I went on an angle, as you notice, the lines are in this angle. It it makes a difference from what settled down here. So the angle of your marks are very important because it distinguishes them from other marks. We're going to talk about that a little more on the next drawing. But I left some gaps. Look, I left this gap. I left this gap. I left this gap. I may have darker areas. Look. I may have lighter areas, but the idea here is that we're making kind of like this bulky clouds or masses that cover the whole sky above it. And this will not be white. The things that I left um, in white, they will become gray, but they will become lighter gray because right now I did not feel them. So when I go and I shade, um, they'll, they make more sense. And we... We, we're going to feel the top of the sky, and then when we come down here, we're going to feel this area too, but we're going to leave untouched anything closer to the trees, okay? Because um, we got to create that distinction from the, these trees, sorry, the, the, the line of trees back down here, then the sky, okay? So I don't go as far as touching the trees, you see? That's, that's because... I don't want to mix them up visually. You see, I, I can feel my pencil is already running out of, as I turn it, of the side marks. So it's time to either switch my pencil or sharpen it. I'm going to switch. You see? I'm going to switch to the other pencil. And uh, uh, again, I repeat myself, the idea of having more than one pencil off already sharpened is because sometimes we're in the mood or we're like on a path of just creating and we don't want to be, we don't want to stop and get, get out of our zone. So having our material ready is useful. And then there's times that you can take a break, very short and sharpen your pencil. But others, you may not want to because you're creating something you you, you're still concentrated, right? So you see how it already looks a little more organic sky because it's in an angle, there's gaps. So make sure you create some random gaps. And now we're going to go again and darken the same marks, but darken in some areas, especially the areas that, I don't know if you can see, um, 
um, that we can kind of mark like a bo bottom of, of, of clouds. So for example, you see the gap that is here? Above it, if I darken this, it's going to look like this is the bottom of something that is that is thick and heavy because the bottom will be in a shade. So this whole bottom, look, let me do this one to make my point. <clears throat> look how this area is going to get darker. Is, you see that already? You see this? So that heaviness is, is created by the darkness. And then I can make another heavy mark down here, look, in this curve. And things are in an angle, kind of like, see, like if the whole, the whole paper on the top is, it's, um, it's a big dark cloud. And it's not that it's a big dark cloud, it's, we're, we're going to do this in winter, like I said, this bottom here is snow. Um, and during winter, we get all kinds of skies, like if, like if it's not winter, but to emphasize that this is winter, we could gray the sky um, and make it more like um, foggy or, you know, is to emphasize that aspect. Okay, so as I shade, some areas are more shade than others, you see. But I don't go too far as making, I already need to sharpen my pencil, you see. I don't make it uh, too, 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 too dark because my tones are still, you see, my tones are not too drastic. They still like in the same palette, meaning, meaning the, the, the source, right, the scale I'm using. So basically, this is what it means. If I were to take a piece of paper, I have shown you this before. Um, <clears throat> give me one moment to see how I can do this. But the idea is that if you, and you could have this on your notes or, um, You don't have to do this right now, um, but I'm going to take five minutes to do this very quickly. You see the paper I have here? So I'm going to make, you decide how, how many, I recommend maybe about six or seven. So if I were to do, oops, a row here of squares. So one. You see how one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you leave that blank, right? Because the paper is white. And then you start here, look, shading this. And I recommend you, even though we're doing all of them the same, way when we start do each square individually so that's one you see how i went once this one is going to be once too actually it should be lighter this one should be lighter but it's okay but look i'm going to do them all one one um one turn so but i'm doing i'm doing them individually One, two, three, four. You don't have to do this right now, but because I just because of the paper, we need two sheets of paper. So we have this paper and we have this paper. But if you have more paper, you can do this or you can do what I'm doing right now in the back of the drawing we're going to do next. OK. Uh, so you could do this in this paper, and then we'll we'll use the other side, 
when it's time for doing our drawing. If you have three sheets of paper, you could do this, but this is important and I, <clears throat> we could make a video just with more detail about this, but one, two, three, four, five, Try to make sure that you go only once, meaning what you'll see what I'm talking about. And this is number six, because seven is blank, right? So this first second one here should have been lighter. Uh, you could lighten up, it up maybe a little bit with the eraser, tapping it, tap it. You see how I tap and the eraser got, I did not win like this. To just make it a tiny little bit lighter. Then the third is very, the difference is not that much, but there is. So I went once on all of them. This is the second time on the third one. So one, two, three. So this one is going to get two because this one got one. So I go over a second time. It's a tiny little bit darker. So this got one, this got two, this one they're all gonna get two from now. So basically, let me do let me do this fourth one. So we got nothing, right? We got one. I went once. This one got two. This can this one. I just did the second, but I'm gonna go again and do a third because these two are the same. So if I go again a third time over it, it's gonna be a little tiny bit darker. You see. So one, two, this has three layers. This has one layer, right? So this is going to be the second one. Look, second. Again, it's going to be the third one. And it has the same amount of, turn, of times like this one. But I want it different. So I'm going to go again a fourth time. So this is the fourth time. And it should be a tiny little bit uh, darker than this one. You see? <clears throat> okay. And you could use your 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 eye, right? So this has fourth. So now this has one, right? We can see. And this has one. But this one should have five. So this is one. This is two. Again, it will be three. Again, will be four. So now it should look just like this one. You see how they look the same? But I want to distinguish it. So now the fifth one is going to make it darker. This is the fifth one. And it's very important you do this by layers. Because that way you could get a little more accurate. So this one has one, this last one. But we're gonna make we're gonna make sure we get six times because this has five, this has four, this has three, this has two, this has one. So this is one for this one. This is the second one I'm doing right now. I'm gonna go again and do the third uh, right now. This is the third. Again will be the fourth. Again, will be the fifth, and it should look just like the one previously by now, because the previous one has five. And one more will make it, one more will distinguish these two. Okay? And with your eyes, you could actually make sure that they, that this last one is actually darker. But the but the reason why you, you went on, um, on layers let the paper also go through. You did not shut down the paper. You layer them up. Okay. All right. So now you can see. And ideally, you don't leave gaps, white gaps. But anyway. So as you can see, this is a scale of grays. And you can actually see clearly that it goes from light to dark. So now you number them. You can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
you could have a scale with 10 or 12, right? Or, you know, you could have different more scale, more numbers in your scale. So, so basically with this, you may be wondering what is it for? You could, when you do a drawing, okay, use all of these tones, or you could actually in your drawing say, I want to use number one, number three, and six. So one, three, and six are the only tones that I'm gonna use for my drawing. So far in this drawing, I can tell you, there is, let's see, there is one, right? Number one, there's number three, a little bit of two, and maybe five. So, you know, so I haven't got to this darkness. You see how dark this is? This is not in our drawing yet. And actually I could stay, we could stay away from it. We could not, we could, this, we could choose not to make anything in this drawing this dark. So that's why I, I'm saying that your drawing doesn't always have to have all of them. Um, but that's how you control um, the tones in your drawing. So this is why it's important to to um, layer things, you know, softly, uh, and also um, control the pressure you put on the paper. Great. So you could cut this or fold it. I'm going to cut mine. Don't, oh, um, anyway, don't cut it because if you drew it on the paper, we're going to draw the next drawing. I don't want you to cut that paper. But I, I, I say that because uh, you may not have three pieces of paper. You may have just two. So this may be in the back of the drawing that you're going to do next. Okay. But um, anyway, don't worry. Put this aside. It's a good reference, but let's continue our drawing. <clears throat> okay. See how it looks like the sky? Those white gaps from the paper. We are, um, I'm gonna use my finger maybe a little bit to shade it, not to keep it white, you see? And now, now what that does is the whiteness of the paper is down here, the snow. So it's no longer way up here. And that distinguishes the spaces too, okay? So look at the drawing, catch up. I'll give you half a minute, or you could pause the video, and then we're going to continue a little bit more with the sky, tackle the snow, and do those trees, and finish this drawing. <clears throat> I got many sharpened pencils. And is that time to sharpen my pencils or get a new pencil? All right, so we may go back to the sky and make some areas darker than others, depending on how our trees are. But basically, when we do our trees in a moment, they're going to be above, above, in front of all of this, and a little tiny darker, so they can actually be uh, visible, right? Maybe trees that are smaller way back here will be lighter, because we know that rule, right, where things farther away get lighter and smaller, but let's tackle the snow here. And the snow, we're gonna make some lines horizontal, 
not from end to end, just, you know, and not too many. We're not going to really cover this too much because the paper is white and the white is the snow. So watch this. They're not going to be straight lines, but the side of our pencil, a little bumpy, down, up, down, and I finish right there. You see that, that line? So what this creates is kind of like if it's like the shade or shadow of of humps or or the snow has created uh, bulks of snow in the ground. Okay, so that's one, maybe a little short one here. Look, something like that. You see, maybe one over here. That's see. And maybe one thicker than the pencils mark like that. One line here. See, maybe let's emphasize them over here a little more, like this left side and So maybe this is a little darker because they come from here. You see how this one is thicker? But it ends right there too. Okay, but you get the idea, you see? Does that make sense? So that's the ground of the snow. Just these lines on the ground where the trees are going to come from. Okay. Now the trees are not going to come all the way down here. Maybe they start coming from half of this up. And I'm going to do the first one. Now, we're going to use the side of our pencil, right? From here, I'm going to do one coming from here. So what the side of the pencil gives you, I already said this, is like a thicker line that's lighter. And we could, we could make, we could then decide if we want to make it darker. But look, it's going to go up, it's thick. And it's going to branch out. One branch goes here. And lift your pencil. Because as you end the branch and you go up and lift it, uh, it becomes thinner at the end. And, and that's how branches and trees are. Um, as they branch out, they become thinner. And the thicker ones are, are getting concentrated towards the center and then the trunk. Okay? That's how a tree grows and, and stays stable. So I go up, branch out, see, so this should be thicker here, and then, and then, and then out of one branch, you see how there's two branches, out of one branch, or, I mean, all the branches, but I make another branch coming out, and out of that branch that came out, another branch, and another branch. See? You see how it's still thin? I mean, uh, lighter. Um, I'm still making a, a lighter mark. <clears throat> I'm not pressing my pencil too, too hard. Maybe another branch comes out of here. See? So out of one line comes another line, kind of like the letter V. You see how this is, looks like a letter V? And out of that letter V, another letter V. 
and another letter B smaller. Look, see, a branch comes out here, branches out, branches out. Okay, that's how you make your look. We have our first tree. Does that make sense? Works out. So look at it closer. Maybe here, you could always, when you watch this video again and on your own or right now, you could pause it, go back. But this is a tree. Uh, it's kind of, all trees are different. This one is branching out, um, kind of like an umbrella going out. Um, we're going to try to do the next ones more narrower, more going upwards. So it's more narrower, more thinner, okay? Um I should have said that. So kind of what I mean is this. Watch. Um, let's do it over on this side. So it goes up. Kind of like at the same level. It goes up. But it, it's going to branch out more narrower. You see how I did my two branches. Now one branch branches out. Another. 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 Okay. You see, branch out this more narrow. So we want them to be kind of like this one. And if you do them smaller, do them coming from down here and um, smaller, sorry, so not this high and, and uh, lighter. Just lighter. See how that one, this one is lighter? I'm going to go come closer to show you exactly how I do that very quickly. So again, one, two, three, look up. One branch, one branch, one branch coming out of this one, one branch coming out of this one, one branch, one branch, one branch. And branch. Okay, that's it. Simple as that. So I'm going to do a bunch more, different sizes. But always keep in mind, you see how these are smaller, lighter, but they are a little higher. They came from the ground a little higher. So that means they're farther away. We know this rule already. So if I want to make something smaller, I bring it up a little higher here and not this high uh, on the top. So maybe up to here Let's see yeah this tree um branch out more what broader but it's okay so let's do a bunch and don't be afraid to make them lighter and smaller okay even if you say, oh, that's too small, I can barely see that. That's okay. That means it's in the distance. I just started doing this one, and it's very center, so I got to be careful. I don't want to emphasize any tree more than another. And the center does that. When you draw something on the center, um, it could get all the attention because it's, you know. But the fact that there's so many, you see how we keep adding them? I know this drawing kind of took us some time, but when you really think about it and you learn to do it, I'm making the trunk a little thicker. Um, the drawing is pretty simple, and the viewer helps us um, uh, do it. Or um, not do it, but um, kind of finish it with their eyes. So. You see all these trees? Okay. So, five more minutes or seven minutes to finish this drawing. 
we're gonna do a bunch more way far here smaller maybe some of them are just lines but they have to be everywhere and you see how now the point at the beginning of now that there's so many trees in the front here um the tree the this background um that we did first makes sense it looked first like a um at first it looked just like a gray row of nothingness because we don't know what it is but now we gave it context because now that there's trees in front of it we know that this back here have to be trees that are very very far away I'm talking about the gray, the gray um, row back there, and it actually helps us distinguish the sky from the um, from the ground. Okay, maybe a few more in some gaps, but they gotta be random. So you gotta keep it random. If you if you start making them all evenly perfect next to each other, what will happen is your drawing will look more like a design, then, um, then um, more realistic um, representation of the trees, okay? So make sure you try to make them um, <clears throat> random, random in different sizes and random in different um, lightness darkness right all of that stuff great so i think this is enough you see how it looks like that now it makes sense and now you choose if you want to make some parts of the sky maybe darker um let's see but i'm i think i'm happy with it let's play with the light to see See how it looks. Kind of like that. But that's our drawing of the trees. And it was, if you think about it, we only use the side of our pencil. I'm sharpening my pencils right now getting ready for the next drawing um we um we only use the side of our pencil and not too much different tones of gray you know and that makes it foggy more like every, when everything gray uh, sorry sky ground trees kind of keep the same tone everything comes together because it kind of looks like a foggy day or something. The moment we start to emphasize something way, way more lighter or way, way more darker, then it's starting to become more contrasting and in this case, more realistic because um, not realistic, like more clear. So it, that fogginess or environment goes away if you do that. But the fact that the gray kind of stood in the same tone makes it more foggy um, day and we know it's snow right because the ground looks like this and um and it makes more sense yeah so i'm gonna sign it we're done i'm gonna sign it more than emphasizing the signature here in this clear white space i'm gonna put it over here with the with this kind of gray mark and um kind of your signature should be visible but not like distracting the drawing or painting perfect that's it that we're done with our first uh you could always go back uh or pause the video that looked good there you see um and and go back to to an area that you need a little more work or um do the drawing again this is something you could definitely do again and, and frame or give out as a gift. <clears throat> okay.
I always encourage you to the drawing more than once. But that's our first drawing. I'm going to put it to the side. I have my scale here. Remember the scale we just did a few minutes ago? So maybe you did this in your only other next sheet of paper. So you, your next drawing will have to be on the back, on the other side of that sheet. Um, but if you had extra papers, uh, you could put this to the side and refer to it. So, and then we're ready for our next drawing. This is even, I think, simpler and interesting because the angle and all drawings and all art is artistic. But when I say this one will look a little more artistic is because of the approach. Um, we can choose when we represent something of how we're going to be looking at it. If I were to draw this pencil, am I going to draw it very closer to the, you know, very close up? Or am I going to draw it far away, small? And then here it comes, right? Am I going to draw it like this? From the side and i'm going to draw it in an angle from the eraser point of view look at that if i were to draw it like this right am i going to draw it from the point of view whoop, of the point like this all right so for centuries through history um, artists rely on representing things, you know, centering them and representing things just like they see them. Nothing gets cut off. If you if you were going to draw an apple, right, the apple is in the picture and everything, right? And then the camera came, the photographic camera came in the 1800s. I mean, it was very early, but it was more commonly as seen by society late 1800s by late 1800s mid mid late 1800s so what happens with a camera if you don't center your subject you don't take your time and you just take a picture um things are going to get cut out when you take a picture um um you know there may be a building or a, tr a, a car or someone or things getting cut out at the edge of the frame right so Artists started to replicate that, and um, and 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 that gives things a little more artistic point of view, right? Uh, and that's what we're gonna do here. Okay, so uh, follow me here um, from this this exercise that I kind of found uh, online, actually. <clears throat> so very lightly, okay, very lightly because we're not making big choices yet, <laughs> very lightly on your paper, on the top, towards the top, from left to right. We're going to make a line that is round, curve, um, maybe from almost half the page here. This, is, this will be half about here. I'm going to bring it up like maybe a here. And I'm going to end on the other side way above here but i'm going to make a curve remember i'm going to make a very light line going like this watch <clears throat> let me show you the whole sheet of paper watch i'm gonna curve it like that See that? From the left, it wasn't half the sheet. It was like a little higher. And I went up, 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 curve, 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 curve. It's curving because it's not straight. If it was straight, look, it would be like that. See how it's not straight? So it's curving, curving, curving. It took a big curve here. And then it went out of the sheet over here. So this, my friends, <clears throat> represents, it's still snow, it's still winter. And we're doing themes, and I know you can see this video any time of the year, but right now is winter, and you're seeing this very, you're seeing this today, and um, and it's winter, right, in the east coast of the United States, and what better way to keep our art and, and drawings 
in the season that we're in. So this represents, imagine a mountain of um, snow. We have the sky up here, and this whole thing is snow. Just with one line. Just with one line. A simple line. Now that, to make this more believable, we're going to do trees, that, and also those trees will cast a shadow in this hill. And then it will really, really make sense. Okay. Now this line had to be very light. You can see it on the video. It's a little darker for me because I need to make sure that you um, you can see it on the video. But if you did it lighter than this, perfect. Okay. Because if you think about it, we're going to have to erase this line in some parts when the trees go up. Where the trees go, you know, uh, the trees that are in front of the um, the hill, sorry, the, the trees that are on the hill here, when they go up, um, we'll have to raise that, that section. For ex uh, Okay? So, for example, um, the first one. Let's do the first one on this big chunk of uh, uh, hill. Uh, um, <clears throat> Don't go from the way down here, okay? Um, let's let's do this halfway through. So halfway in the mountain here. I'm gonna go up straight. This has to be straight because it, it's a tree. It's a trunk of a tree. So this is what I mean by we have to erase um, part of the hill, and that's why we did this line curve lighter or light. So this is one, and this is two. Watch. Now, this is a very thick tree. Not all the trees we're going to do are going to be this thick, OK? The bottom here is going to be a cylinder. The, the whole trunk is a cylinder. So remember the bottom of a cylinder? When you look it from the top, it has to be curved. So let's do this curve here. And that means the bottom of this tree is buried in the snow. Look. See that? But this is what I mean. If this is the trunk of a tree, this thickness, and not of the tree, by the way, we're going to keep doing many trees like this um, in this drawing, but they're all going to different in thickness. This may be the thickest one. Okay? So just letting you know, no, you should not get it this thick anymore when we do the rest of the trees. But my point is that you see the line that we did? If this tree is in front of the hill, edge here, we're going to have to erase here, this, this section. OK, so watch what happens if I erase the hill line right here. You see how now this looks that is in front of the hill? <clears throat> OK, so we're going to now do all the trees, and then we're going to go in detail representing them and then casting a shadow over the hill. So again, this is the first one. Let's do another one, maybe. This is not just the first one and thicker. Um, it's actually the closest to us, so all the other ones should be above this one, like about here, you know. So let's do one here. But remember I said no other tree is going to be as thick as this first one we did. So I did this line. The next line is going to be maybe this thick. Keep the line straight and parallel. You may wonder what does pa parallel means. Parallel are two lines. You see these two lines? that as they continue next to each other, they keep the same distance. So the same distance from here to here should be the same distance from here to here. And if this line were to keep going infinitively long, <laughs> it should keep that same distance. OK? That's parallel. Now, 
now again um we'll erase this later let's keep doing our trees okay and let's make sure that the bottom of them is curved like this because they are buried in the snow see maybe a, a a thinner one up here look up and up look how cool that is follow me here we have three so far the bottom is curved one two three let's do a fourth one here different thickness remember so here's one keep those lines parallel and straight four this one is going to be very thin over here bottom curve one two three four five and then one last one here and we're going to do more we're going to do more but last one for now here so these ones if you think about it are coming from the hill the hill is here where my hand is going and all these trees are coming from it because they're burying the snow so that's why this is curved because they're a cylinder and when we learn when we make a cylinder where's my when we make a cylinder one side we see and once uh the the oval and one side we see curve so we could either see the cylinder like this right where this is the top and we can see the top but then we don't see the bottom circle because it's that's where it's resting but if i turn this around then my cylinder i can see the bottom because this means it's lifted, right? And then I don't see the top because the other side of the oval is what is resting. Okay. I could put it in shading too. I could shade this to give it a more three-dimensional look. So this is one side of the cylinder, or we could look at it this way. So this is how these trees are. And the bottom are curved, is curved because they're buried in the snow. You see? OK. So let's erase the lines of the, sorry, the line of the hill that is going across the center of these trees. So I need to erase here. You see? Here. 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 And here. Now what I'm left with of the hill, now I can actually emphasize the line of the hill. And the line, uh, sorry, the outline of the trees again. So I could actually make this a little darker. It's very important that we had to do this line first. Um, you may wonder why we couldn't do it later. It's very important that we do it first because it needs to have that continuity. Look, that continuity that links it as the hill if you did if you did the trees first and then this and then the line you may not match it you know if i make the line here for the first time and i do the one that to create continuity it may be lower and not align right so now like i said we're gonna go over the outline of these trees again we're just making them not too 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 dark but a little darker to emphasize them that's all, okay? This is snow. 
it's winter, so we're emphasizing darkness against uh, whiteness or, or um, lighter tones. And this, we actually can get away with outlining very good. Careful with your hand touching the drawing, the bottom here of your, because it could smudge, it could smudge your drawing. But these lines are look much more um, emphasized. Okay, so we're gonna have more trees than this. Okay, right now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're gonna have more trees, but the trees we're gonna have. Guess what? They're gonna have. They're gonna be thinner, uh, and they're gonna be on the other side of the hill. So we have six that are coming from the hill. The other ones are also coming from the hill, but we don't see the bottom of them because they're on the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's do the first one up here. Look, watch. This is all I mean. It's coming from the line of the hill. This tree. This tree I just did back here when you think about it it's a tree that is also on the hill but we don't see the bottom of it because it's it's on the other side it's coming from the other side does that make sense this one you see okay so we're going to do a few more like that of different thickness maybe one here, thinner. Maybe we could do one that's like very close to this one. And one more over here. For a total of One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten trees. Okay, so the ones that are going to cast a shadow, they all are going to cast a shadow. But we're going to see the shadow on the hill of the ones that are. we can see the bottom of them coming from the hill. These other ones... Um, We'll be casting a shadow, uh, and we should actually represent it, but we're not going to, not to make things confusing, okay? Because we will not be able to match the shadow with the source coming from the ground, right? You'll see what I mean in a moment. Okay, so these are birch trees. Um, they mm -hmm. tend to have like a white um, bark um, and then some darkness when they peel off. Um, so let's 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 do this two that are the closest thicker. I'm gonna do these two for you, and then we're gonna continue doing the other ones that we can see are coming from the ground of the hill. And um, yeah, but I'm emphasizing these first two so you can clearly see how I do it, how we're gonna do it, and then the other ones you'll be a little more confident replicating what happened on these ones. So the bottom, first of all, the contrast, the shadows, when we do the shadows later on, are going to be lighter, right? Because there's just a shadow. But this contrast of the bark and the darkness of the tree, when it's, the bark is peeled off, has to be very strong. So that means that um, the darkness here will be very dark, you know, but, but not too, too dark, but darker. And this is where you could use your scale and say, oh, I'm going to use number six for this, you know, for this part. Right. Okay. So the bottom has these marks going up. The rest of the marks, as the tree grows everywhere, are going to come from side to side. You'll see in a moment. And also a little curve, just like the bottom here is curved. We're going to curve our marks because the trunk of the tree is actually um, round or, or curved. You'll see what I mean. But these ones that are touching the bottom, these marks that I'm going to write now, kind of come up 
uh, straight down up. So look and make sure you go over with your pencil a little extra um, to make it darker. There you go. You see that? So it takes a little while for my camera to focus, <clears throat> but there it is. Maybe a little darker in a moment, but it will all make sense. You'll see when we start doing the entire trees, <clears throat> but that's the first from the bottom up. This one too. See, they're like pointy triangles of different heights. This one, we can see the bottom two. This one, we can see the bottom two. Okay, this one, we can see the bottom two. And this one, we can see the bottom two. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna go side to side. So this is what I mean. So this mark may come like this, it's like it's almost like if he was beaten or something because he lost his bark right there look but the next mark also curved maybe bigger look maybe a bigger darker gap these are all going to be random maybe a little one here you see maybe a little bigger mark here <clears throat> when I say bigger, very big, but you get the idea. I'm going to use the side of my pencil to cover more area, but look, maybe this mark is this big. Maybe this, maybe this mark, this next one, look, is floating right in the middle of the trunk of our from our point of view right there but you see we need to kind of make sure that it's it's in a curved manner just like the tree is curved that gives it more reality don't do these marks too straight all of them because the tree is not straight from side to side it is straight going up and down this is straight left to right it is curved just like the bottom here of the um of the you know and i'm just if you see me right now i'm just going over it to make these things darker so i'm, I'm layering it up again but this is how yep how these um bird streets are are gonna be you see that one you see how does that make sense now Okay, so now we do the same thing with the other trees. Let's do the second one. So this one has, a, these are all random marks, okay? All random marks. In some of them, I really emphasize that curve. And in some of them, I really make that mark, oops, very big. That's huge, but you get the idea. Um, but they all are gonna have these marks. Even the ones back there that we don't see the bottom of them. Okay, we're gonna go over. We're gonna do those in a moment. But I'm going a little faster uh, for time. But keep doing all of them. So if you see me just going, going a little, I'm not trying to rush you. It's just for time. Um, and and once I do all of this, if you haven't catch up with me, um, don't worry. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do, you could do it with me, and then get back to this part. 
just because I'm rushing, you see, I'm not making them as random as it should be. Now I'm getting into the ones that are far away. Um, in the distance that are, sorry, not in the distance, that are coming from the other side of the hill that we do not see the bottom. We do not see the bottom of um, these ones. You see, the side of your pencil is so helpful because you could cover a lot, lot more faster. There may be little marks, look, that are very small. Like, sorry about that. <clears throat> that are um, darker, you know, like little, not dots, but like little small marks that just represents that the, the, the bark fell in that spot. Uh, it's not there. Okay. So two more to go for me. You will, don't worry, get there. But I cannot emphasize how important it is to make this random. Okay, that randomness is what gives this that organic aspect. And now it's gonna go with what I'm gonna with what we're gonna do next is gonna go, look a little more even real <clears throat> because we're gonna cast a shadow and more importantly we're gonna shade one side of the tree and shading that side of the tree um, gives the gives the tree um, a more roundness and and realistic aspect. Okay. All right. So the light is gonna come from the top left. That's a very common, I already said this before, that's a very common source of light. And just like we did this dark marks um, a little curve, we're going to kind of make this little shading curve marks on the right side of the trees. So because the light is coming from the where my fingers are pointing like this, top left, the light comes like in this direction. The shadow or shade of the tree will be on the opposite. So it will be the right side. So on the right side, especially, I'm gonna start with this big one here. The right side of this tree, watch, it's gonna have this little lighter marks curve you see how that curve on the right side only okay and you see how now the tree is a little shaded from the right now this after you do these curvely lines we're gonna go up and down from right in so up and down you see how dark i'm doing the up and down going in and i stop right away i don't want to go too far in that's it look that's it right there you see how i stop myself and then i'm going to go back and really emphasize the outline of the right side yep and now, and now this tree is actually done. We're done with this tree. I'm going to go and show you closer up from bottom up. But you see how besides the up and down from the right side, we have that right to left curve, curvely mark that it's very important because that kind of gives the roundness of the tree. So let's do all the rest of the others and, and emphasize when you need to, to make things darker. So anything you see that you feel it should be darker and it's not, make it darker. Okay. So my, my right marks curving in. 
And now in a moment, I'm gonna do my up and down marks on the right side of this trunk. Right now. That's it. And I'm not gonna go too far in. That's it. I did not go too far in, because we don't need to. We gotta stay on, on the right side of that uh, outline, okay? Perfect. <clears throat> Let's do the other trees. And if you notice, I'm working from my left to my right, so my hand doesn't dirty or disrupt the rest of the drawing. Uh, sharpen your pencils or change change your pencil as you run out of um, tip or graphite. And let's do all the trees like that. You'll catch up with me. You can always um, pause the video or go back. Remember? <clears throat> let's do the rest. See, the little curvy marks. And if you notice, they are a little darker when we don't put our pencil from the side, but it's okay. Um, but my emphasis is when I go up and down on that right outline edge, like right about now, when I go like this, I don't go too far moving to the left right there but i i stress the actual right side right here because that's the that's where the actual shadow is you know it's more emphasized right here on the on the sorry on the right side i'm gonna turn my paper i think it's faster for me when um I'm in an angle. Try to curve this, don't do them straight. And I'm gonna do all my little marks first and then I'll I'll focus on the up and down. Now that my paper is already in an angle, I'm gonna concentrate on this little um, curve marks and then I'll do the up and down right outline emphasis on all of them at once in a moment i'm almost this one is so far and thin this one that i'm just gonna do the the up and down mark that's from um right to left like this So right here, this one is basically just a thicker, um, a thicker um, right side, right outline. Sorry, we're almost done. We just will cast a shadow, and that's it for this drawing. Great. <clears throat> I might have to emphasize the space in between the trees not on the hill but on the sky okay with gray so this is why we've been emphasizing this outline that defined them but i think that's it we did the shade on them now we're gonna why don't we before we cast the shadows why don't we um put the grade of the sky so the sky is actually the space between the trees that are up here, if you think about it. You know what I mean? Like here, 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 right? So let's gray that area right here. And when you gray this, please, it's very important that you keep the same tone 
because there's some continuity in the sky. Okay? All this gray is the same sky that should keep... And don't worry, we're, we're going to emphasize the outline of the hill. You'll see how this is going to pop up when we emphasize the side, the outline that defines the hill top. But you see how I should have started from the left to the right, okay? Not the right to the left, but to the left. And great this whole space that is the sky. And what this does is just makes the bark the trees pop out more because now the trees are the only ones that had that whiteness. And the snow has it too. Um This is very thin here, but it's there. And then there's this. All right, we're almost done. This is the sky that is gray. And that's it after this. We have a gray sky, you see? You see how the sky is gray between the trees? So now I'm gonna go over this line that defines the hill top very dark to really define it you could actually go over the line of each tree the outline sorry to define it even more and all we're missing i'm going to go over this what i just said the outline of the trees all this actually is missing is the shadow of um the trees that are that we sorry the trees that we can actually see coming from the ground here this one two three four five six these six ones we can actually gonna cast a shadow uh, that they that they cast from um, from um, in an angle towards the right bottom okay. And then, um, and then we'll be done. But make sure you outline your trees. All right, ready? I'm going to give you half a minute to look at this. You could pause it on your own on this moment. And um, if you're drawing is very, if you're copying exactly, right, what we've been doing, you can um, look at it and, and match it right now. Um, I'm cleaning the white of the paper in the tail representing the snow. Careful where your hand touches this drawing because this drawing is very easy to smudge. Oh, you see? Um, but right here, I'll leave it alone for you to look at. Sorry, right here. We're gonna cast the shadows in a moment and be done. But take your time, time to um, look at it. And one thing I'm gonna say is now you can see what I meant by the artistic approach of the work by kind of emphasizing um, an angle of it. Like we did not focus like higher on the point of view to actually cast the entire trees. We kind of like focus on the on the bottom of them and there's an emptiness here so all those things balance you know this just like there's an emptiness here that overwhelms there's also a uh, come in the composition a, a bunch of lines and things going up here 
that balance to work for that. Okay. So the way we're going to cast the shadow, I said, is from left to right in an angle going down, right? Because the light is also coming down from left to right in an angle. And, um, and it's going to be the same thickness of the tree. So if the tree is very thick, the shadow casted will be thick. If the tree is thin, the shadow casted will be thin. Ready to do the first? And as, as the shadow, uh, the shadow will have the same gray tone, but it will get a little darker only as it's closer to the source. So watch here. Let's do this first two that are closer to us and are big and thick. So in an angle from left to right going down, look, we have this. I'm using the side of my pencil. See how I'm keeping the same thickness? Now I fill this in because it's a shadow, right? And remember how I said it might more likely get a little darker. Sorry, it may, um, it may not. Uh, it will keep the same tone, sorry, but it will get darker as it's closer to the source and the source here is the source here is the trunk so the bottom of the trunk watch it's going to get a tiny little bit darker which is what i'm doing right now i'm giving it an extra little layer and that's our shadow for that one you see Let's do the other one. Same thickness. Keep those lines parallel, just like the tree itself. Fill it in with the same tone and maybe get a little darker at the bottom of the, um, as it's closer, sorry. As it's closer to the bottom of the, um, of the tree, of the trunk. It got a little darker here. That was just the paper. <sighs> okay. That was just a bump in the, but this right here has to be maybe a little darker. And I want to show you something with the next one. Um, this one, I could have done it too, what I'm going to do next. But uh, this one look right. Remember how it kind of is casted like right here. I'm gonna curve it a little bit, and what that represents is like if there's bumps in the snow. So the fact that this goes up and down, up and down, is just as if the lines are straight, but they're being curved because the snow on the ground has bumps, are like little hills. I shouldn't have had to do this darker. I'm gonna erase it, it's too dark. In these areas, it's too dark. If your lines are blurry, don't worry. I'm gonna clean, sorry, the edges. I'm gonna clean them with my eraser. You see what I mean in a moment. I'm making this darker here, as, as, but this is what I mean. So I'm gonna erase to make the edge of the line just closer. Sorry, uh, more clean. If your line, basically what I mean, if the, if the thickness of the shadow casted uh, changes, you could just make it even by using the eraser. <sighs> you could blow. Or where is it? You could use a soft um, brush. So I could clean these lines by making them sharper with my eraser. Look. The brush, uh, when you're home, the brush, it could be, a, it's got to be a soft 
brush. <clears throat> okay. So let's do the other rest one, the rest of them, to so understand how um, the the um, sorry the the curvy aspect here is just representing that there are bumps on the snow. As cool as that looks, that's what's happening. So I should I should curve this one too a little. And look how with my eraser. I could go in here. But I could go in here. To make it curvy. Just like if in the snow there are bumps. Perfect. This keeps getting dark here because I keep touching it with my fingers that are dirty. But let's move on with the other shadows and, and, and finish this, okay? We're almost there. <clears throat> we have three more to cast. This one, I'm going to have to curve it too a little because it's very close to the other one. Fill it in. Using the side of my pencil carefully, emphasizing a little darkness here at the trunk in a moment. Right here, you see, it gets a little darker. Let's do this one, maybe straight, no more curves anymore. But the ones that are casting the shadow, again, are the ones we can see the bottom of them. I mean, the bottom of the, the tree, as it's buried into the snow. And one last one that goes across here is this one that I'm about to do back here. And that's our drawing. Maybe a little bit of cleaning I need to do. This one is too angled. I'm going to have to erase this here. It doesn't need to be um, and I'm going to erase whatever is dirty to kind of clean my drawing a little. And that's it. This is our drawing. This may be a little too much curve, but you get the idea that there are bumps here in the snow and they create those bumps on the shadow casted. <laughs> Sign it. <laughs> Maybe in this snow, in this shadow, so it's not. Um, too, too distracting from the rest of the drawing if I do it in the white snow. And that's it. You know, this, this, this subject and this drawing can actually will look really good in a painting well, when you really think about it. <clears throat> well, we learn how to use our pencil from the side. Um, to create thicker lines and control um, lighter shading and then build with layers of shading. And then we did this. Let me pull the camera out a little more. 
so you could see hopefully both drawings next to each other and then we did this drawing which can be placed here and we earlier did this drawing oh, that is a little more um, how could I say a little more blurry or um, um, here we go a little more um, foggy here we go that's it that's good so I hope you enjoy. If you feel a little rush or behind, don't worry. You could watch the video again. Okay, do the drawing again. Pause it. But these are our two drawings for today. Um, they're almost entirely on the same shot, but you get the idea. Um, here's the first one. We did. And there you go. Now it's focused. It's the first drawing we did. Sorry, my camera keeps getting out of focus. <clears throat> There's a lot going on. And the distance too. So this is our first drawing we did today. That's better. And this is the second one. Really cool contrast of black and white with the pencil. Um, right. And if it shines in some, you see that's the graphite. So. I hope you enjoy. Have a good uh, weekend or re also good rest of the week. Um, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Please keep drawing even um, on your own time. You could refer to the videos or also do your own projects. <clears throat> I look forward to seeing them. See you soon.